Hey everybody, J-Rod Plays here. Welcome to today's video. Today we'll be going over five builds that are going to be great for next season with the new Elemental Orbs artifact mods that will be coming out next season. It's going to change the gameplay loop a little bit. It's going to give you some additional things to do when you're out there, and it's going to give you a little bit of a strand fill for each of your classes with those additional Elemental Orbs. So it's going to be really nice and really strong and a lot of these builds to have these Elemental Orbs going. In our first build, it's going to be that true tried and tested build that I use all the time, the Fallen Sunstar build. But in this case, it's going to be the Fallen Sunstar build Elemental Orbs version. And since we're running Arc next season, uh, it's going to not necessarily be as strong when it comes to some of the abilities as it is this season, because a lot of these abilities were returned to an 11 with the Lightning Strikes twice and a couple of other artifact mods. But having these Elemental Orbs out there on top of the ability generation and the way that they interact with the teammates picking up your orbs, you using your orbs, it's still going to be a nice build. It's still going to be a lot of fun. It's still going to be strong. And it's still going to be one of the most used builds, I think, on my Warlock when I'm doing general play. And it can even have its place in hiring content, but definitely general play, definitely when I'm doing story, this is going to be the build that I probably carry, and this is probably going to be the build that I run day one when I'm doing my content, as you'll see me doing the initial story missions, it'll be this build. And so let's start off with the subclass, just to kind of review it one more time. Of course, doing Chaos Reach, because it's fast, you can cut it off, you can save it for later, and you can also build it back up if you choose so with some mods using Healing Rift, just because that's a good survivability, and then of course it's going to pair with the Arc Soul, and that Arc Soul is really nasty when you're amplified. It's just like having an exotic Arc Soul, and so really nice setup there. We're going to be using the, obviously, Burst Glide. Most Warlocks use Burst Glide to move around the battlefield quickly. Ball Lightning. I like Ball Lightning because the cooldown is not too bad for what it offers you. It's only uh, 154, and it gives you that additional benefit of throwing the Lightning out there so you don't have to be in something's face. So you can kind of have that mid to kind of mid-long range with your melee, and you can use that melee to then generate additional energy for other things. I stick with Pulse Grenade because it's just such a good grenade. It's got a wide radius. It's got this lasting effect that it's going to stay and do additional damage, additional damage. It forces things to move that are hiding behind cover. And it's really good for bosses because it'll stay and do that lingering damage. And then you're going to pair it with your fragments. Before we get into the fragments, though, just want to touch again on the aspects. Electrostatic Mine, defeating targets with arc abilities, or defeating jolted targets or blinded targets creates an ionic trace, which is going to feed back into your ability energy, which is why it's really strong. And then collecting these ionic traces makes you amplified, so you're almost always amplified. And that, again, is just icing on the cake for this build. Arc Soul, of course, whenever you cast your Rift, if you're standing in the Rift, you get the Arc Soul. While amplified, it is a supercharged Arc Soul. And now, going into the Fragments, I still use Spark of Resistance because even though I play a little back, if I do get surrounded by combatants, I want to get that additional incoming damage resistance. And then I get that additional 10 strength to help the uh, melee come back a little quicker. Not too, too groundbreaking, but that resistance is really nice, and I always stick with that. Although this one is the one you would change out if you did want to play a little farther back. This is the one that I would say you could change out. The rest of them I would definitely keep. Uh, spark of Magnitude, so Lingering Grenades, for example, my Pulse Grenade is going to have extended duration. Get that additional damage in. My Spark of Beacons, when I'm amplified, any Arc Special Weapon Final Blows are going to create a blind explosion, and you'll see that with the weapons that I use. And just really killer. Shuts down rooms of, of enemies, and they're just going to sit there wondering why you kill them. It's amazing. And then, of course, Spark of Shock. My Arc Grenades jolt targets. Pulse Grenade is going to continually jolt targets over and over and over again, and you can use this to stun overloads. So, very, very nice. Gives you that flexibility, and since you always have your grenade for the most part, you're going to be able to skip on the overloads and just be a little disciplined with your grenade, waiting for that overload to come out once you know the maps that you're on, or should I say the dungeons that you're in, or the... Uh, adventures that you're in, you want to make sure that you're saving your grenade for those right moments when you know a champion's coming up. Now to kind of discuss a little bit of the weapons, uh, I want to go over some of the weapons that I think are going to be great next season, and I'm going to cover exactly kind of what I would run if I was in that situation uh, with the mods that are coming up. So for Unstoppable, you're going to run a fusion, of course. Uh, in this case, next season, Delicate Tomb's going to make a comeback. Uh, Delicate Tomb, I haven't really used it very much because I've been using the Cold Heart more often. They both do very similar things by creating ionic traces to feed into the build. But for sure, Delicate Tomb is going to be something that I use in heavy rotation next season just because it's got that additional benefit to stun the champions and it still has that ionic traces with final blows. So it's a nice stand-in and it's going to give you the blind effect, everything that kind of runs together with this particular build. 
You'll see me using Delicate Tomb quite a bit. You can also use Midas Reckoning with the Reservoir Burst option, and that's going to reach out and kill a lot of things too. Uh, or Iterative Loop with Volt Shot and Compulsive Reload, also very nice, but probably going to be what I'll be running with Delicate Tomb most often with that particular setup if I'm not using the Riptide, for example. Now, with the build that I have right now, I'm running Cold Heart because, again, Cold Heart does a bunch of damage when you have that focus as a linear. It'll blind things and it'll create, with the changes, the uh, traces for you. So I use Double Special. Since they nerfed Double Special coming up, that's where you're going to make that change. You're going to go with Delicate Tomb instead, and then you would go with the primary that's going to be fitting to whatever you're doing. If you're playing a little bit long, you could even run Taraxipos with Cascade Point. Very nice, kind of nasty. I like Perpetualis, and you'll see that in my next build as well. With the Killing Wing Golden Tricorn, since you're getting a lot of ability kills, Perpetualis is going to chew through things, so it is very nice. You can also run, if you're running close range, you can run Buzzard with the, uh, not this particular role with the Overflow Rangefinder, but the one with Kinetic Tremors. You can even run Battlescar with Kinetic Tremors. Super nice. And so those are going to be the things that I would set up and the way that I would use that. So let's pretend like I'm using Delicate Tomb with Perpetualis. Uh, and don't forget as well, uh, if you really wanted to do, again, with the changes, Monte Carlo is going to be really nice if you're running something that's not exotic in this particular slot. But I am going to be running my exotic in this particular slot, so this is what I'll set up here for us there. Uh, now, a Piercing Bowstring, a Trinity Ghoul is going to be huge. There's going to be a lot of... Uh, synergy with the semi-auto striker and rapid fire ranger setup. Semi-auto striker, if you have fewer than two stacks of armor charge, rapid precision shots with it are going to give you additional armor charges, so that's a nice little boost if you're out of armor charges. And then rapid fire ranger, those long range hits that you're going to get if you make rapid precision hits, for example, if you hit all three of your arrows, I'm sure it's going to trigger it, you'll get a weakened effect on the targets that you hit, so that's going to be really nice as well. Uh, on top of the Trinity Ghoul, you can also get Tripwire Canary. going to work very similar, it's just legendary. Uh, it's not going to have that large kill radius with the three arrows, but it's going to be like a single shot, and you can build it to have like Dragonfly, things like that, so that you still have kind of a very close legendary version of the Trinity Ghoul. Uh, if you're running Overload Machine Gun, Thunderlord and the Swarm are going to be really nice. I have an Arc Swarm, so that way I got big ones on there, because it's the, uh, the Adept version. And then, of course, Thunderlord, that's a, that's a fan favorite. That one's going to be one that I would run as well. So if you, if you don't see me running this rocket launcher blowout with Demolition and Explosive Light, I'll be running the Swarm, and that'll be my heavy hitter for that so that I can clear rooms with it as well. And uh, that'll give me the option to do something different up here, like I said, like something with Kinetic Tremors, like Buzzard with Kinetic Tremors, to uh, really work down a lot of the... Uh, tankier enemies if I really wanted to do that and I wasn't doing like a barrier thing. Now if you're running an anti-barrier auto rifle I would probably run centrifuge if I was going to be running that as my exotic with Riptide because then you got the flexibility you can slow and take out overloads, you can freeze and keep barriers from bearing up and then you can shatter unstoppable so show clip with auto loading even though it's going to take a couple more shots, still very, very strong to have that flexibility to deal with all three champions. And then Centrifuge is going to make it to where you can move around quite a bit and still keep your ammo count up. You also can then use the Centrifuge Catalyst, which I still have to unlock. While Amplify, this weapon gradually gains overcharge, so even if you're necessarily moving around as much, it's going to be really nice to help kind of keep that ammo count up and you're going to get a ton of kills that are going to be generating those orbs, and then we'll go into that more as with it comes to the artifact things. So now that we've talked about the weapons and kind of the way that they go about them, I do want to talk one more legendary on the auto rifle side. You can run Come to Pass with Triple Tap Adaptive Munitions. That's going to be strong and higher in content because of the adaptive munitions. And if you don't have that, you could try SARS vs. Frenzy. But let's go into the build. So main thing, the Fallen Sunstar Exotic. The Fallen Sunstar Exotic, what it does is going to create ionic traces that move faster and grant you additional ability energy. So that's why you use Fallen Sunstar, because all these ionic traces that we're going to be creating, they're going to supercharge our ability to regenerate, and nearby allies also gain ability energy when you collect the ionic trace. So when you're around somebody that's using this, you're going to feel like your builds are supercharged, and you're going to always have your builds topped off. So it's really nice in a team setting and also very nice solo. For the main build, uh, like I said, whenever you're changing to next season, a lot of these things are going to change. I'm probably going to have a Harmonic Siphon mod almost always on a lot of my builds. 
just because of the way that the mod costs have changed. So in this case I'm doing arc build. I'm going to be getting arc weapon final blows creating orbs of power just for a one energy cost. And then I'll probably be leaning more into a lot of these super mods that build the super. And so for I was using hands on because it was only a one cost mod. But what I would end up doing is probably getting rid of my ammo finder mods in favor of something like ashes to assets because I'm tossing around a lot of grenades and then maybe even doing just like a special ammo instead of a heavy ammo or maybe going into a kinetic siphon mod if I was doing something kinetic or I was doing like a strand arc combo mod then I can pick that and instead of this I can go strand arc combo which would be three but then that would also allow me to have perpetualis and then my arc weapons both generating for three costs so that's probably what I would end up doing so let's assume that I'm just going to pick this here and this is the three cost strand arc combo with the three cost access to assets meaning if I'm getting my grenade kills which I'm going to be throwing a ton of grenades that's going to be getting my super back so that I can clear rooms or I can kill bigger bosses quickly using my super now for the gloves, I'm running Artifice Armor. You don't necessarily need it, but it is nice, and it does help me get my stats up so that I can get my Resilience to 100, I can get my Discipline to 90, I can still have good recovery at 80, and that'll help kind of just base keep my abilities up. What I'm running is a Firepower mod, so that way Grenade Final Blows create orbs of power for me. I'm running Impact Deduction and Bolstering Detonation. Next season, since I'm not going to have the reduction down to the 1, I'm going to probably have to choose between these two. If I did have to choose between these two, I would say I would go with the bolstering detonation over the impact induction because this is going to be a survival thing. And then I would just switch this one out maybe for like fastball so that I could have my grenades thrown a little bit easier. Uh, but for sure, I want to go firepower. I get a lot of kills or grenades and then bolstering detonation, and that's probably what I would go with for next season. For the chest piece, what I'm looking at here is to pick a arc resistance or any kind of resistance that you're running up against, and then maybe a concussive dampener or a double resistance, and then trying to get reserves as well. Since you have no class-specific mods that reduce the one-cost energies for these, you're probably going to not have so much reserve ammo in a lot of these situations, so you're probably just going to go with a lot of resists. So you go with like triple resists, or concussive dampener, arc resist, and then you can go with, for example, harmonic resist. And the reason why you do harmonic resist and arc resist is that these will stack together. Normally, arc resist gives you diminishing returns if you have two of them, but if you, like, say, had two arc resists and then a third one, instead of getting the diminished return, you actually get the full benefit from harmonic resistance because harmonic resistance is a different mod type, and so you still get that same percentage, so you end up getting more resistance this way than with three of them but I would then choose probably your main resist mod for your class and then two that are going to correspond with something else that you know you're going to have to deal with more of. For the boots uh, I would always make sure that I have these stacks on stacks so that I get additional armor charges and keep my armor charges up. Uh, the reason why you want to keep your armor charges up is because of the changes next season you may switch over from for example a firepower mod to a grenade kickstart mod but in my case I often switch out a lot of these for the weapon surges and so I, I always just kinda have this stacks on stacks there as kind of a placeholder but let's say I was doing weapon surges this is the one that would go uh, a lot of the main generating ones though for me are gonna be like innervation for grenade and invigoration for melee but you don't have to go this route I just like having them topped off I like having that loop going you could even consolidate with absolution so this is kind of a flexible setup you don't really necessarily need any of these you could even go elemental charge instead for example so instead of having additional charges you just have more regular charges by collecting a bunch of ionic traces and so this would be nice to have the elemental charge to have the leg armor mod for your melee and then to have the leg armor mod for your grenade or double grenade. So those are kind of what I would do. You can even do loader mods. I don't really use them very often though. I tend to go with the ability generation because I like to keep that up. There's a ton of orbs flying around so that's probably the setup that I would use for next season is to have elemental charge with a couple of ability energy generating mods. Now for the bond, again I have an artifice bond, you don't necessarily need it, it gets just nice, but you're still going to have these four slots. I usually run time dilation to keep the armors from decaying. 
since you don't necessarily have anything else that you're spending your armor charges on as much. If you wanted to run Utility Kickstart, that would be perfectly fine, so that way you always have something to get your arc soul going so that you can kind of generate that, and then that'll tie in with Bomber, because you're, you're you know, burning your Rift more often to get your grenade energy back more often, and then Reaper, these two will be nice together, burn your Rift, you end up getting your orb, your orb will start your other generation, and then you get your cooldown on your grenade down, so it's kind of a win-win-win. So that's probably how I would set up next season. Again, the build this this season is set up a little differently because the artifact changes what cost where, but in this case, this is going to be the same Class Armor 1, Reaper 1, Reaper 3, and then Utility Kickstart 3, and then of course my grenade to get my grenade up as high as possible. So that would be the build setup that I would use there. And overall, if you just want to take a quick picture, this is the setup here. Now I'm going to go into the rest of the artifact. I have the artifact information from the article that Bungie put out so that I can go into specifically what I would choose to round this elemental orb build out and how to make an elemental orb build in the first place. So I'll see you there in the artifact section. Now since the artifact isn't available on screen, I'm not going to be able to show it to you on the character screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the footage in the background of me actually using this build. And then from there I'm going to bring up the article itself and show you sections of the article so you can kind of see where they sit as far as which row these particular mods are in and what we're going to be looking forward to. Now the second row is going to be having the new combination mods and so that's going to be like the Arc Strand Siphon that I mentioned. If I was using Perpetualis this is what I would go with so that I get the Orb Generation mod in one. So three becoming two different mods, like a three cost mod that is. Uh, you're also going to have Solar Strand Siphon, Void Strand Siphon, the origin perks are going to be returning again, and there's even a new redacted origin trait for the new weapons for the season. And then Diviner's Discount. In most of my builds, I'll probably run Diviner's Discount so I can have scab mods available. In this build, though, for sure I'm going to be running the Arc Strand combo. And then I may run the origin perk if I have something that's going to kind of synergize with that. Or I may just go back and take an additional mod for champions. And that's probably what I'll end up doing is running the Arc Strand Siphon with an additional champion mod as well so I have more flexibility and I don't have to keep changing as often. Now the next section is the most important one. That's going to be the third row. That's going to be when this build unlocks its full potential. So you're going to be getting the Elemental Orbs Arc and that's going to allow you when you're using an Arc subclass, Arc Weapon Final Blows have a chance to spawn Elemental Orbs and that creates the Elemental Orb build in all these videos. You're going to have corresponding Elemental Orb builds except for the Strand builds. The Strand builds already have Tangles and that's already tied in but there's something nice for Tangles that you'll see going forward as well that I'll be talking about. And so now that we've got the Elemental Orb set up and you throw the orb for the arc orbs it's going to create an explosion that jolts targets so that's going to be really nice it's going to be just like a free jolt you don't even need a volt shot weapon you just throw your orb out there boom free jolt and there you go now since i'm running thunderlord and i'm running the swarm a lot of the times i'm probably going to be running overload machine guns but not always and so i have that flexibility this is going to be kind of the one and two but the one that I'm never going to come off of probably is communal pickups. And you'll hear me say this in all of my builds as I'm kind of breaking down each build. And I've kind of recorded them in their own little time. Uh, the communal pickups mod is when an ally destroys or picks up your tangle or elemental orb. The tangle cooldowns reduce by 5 seconds. And I imagine the elemental orbs are the same way. And you get bonus damage with weapons matching your subclass for 10 seconds. And so that's huge because when I'm running a strand build, I usually run the wonderer on my warlock because I like to try to play with that kind of side build and getting used to it. They're going to buff it next season and it's so annoying when you have your tangles you're running the wanderer you're trying to suspend stuff you're trying to use it on champions and people just grab them and throw them and they're not getting the same power up that you're getting and they're just wasting your tangles no more anytime somebody picks up your tangle well, it may be slightly annoying to throw off your build just a little bit. You don't get your jolt in this case. You still get the additional damage with weapons matching your subclass for 10 seconds, so you still get something out of it. That's huge. And I th hopefully that they will keep this in every build going forward through the final shape until they figure out a way to, like fix that where people can't throw off your builds especially with tangles but that's going to be stuck on my build um, now with elemental fury that one's going to be an option too so when you're stunning champions they take bonus damage from your abilities and elemental orb damage i won't be taking this on probably any of my other ones because it's not as potent as on this one per se but this one you you're going to get your super quite a bit you're going to have your grenade quite a bit so this one could be really strong against champions and of course your elemental orb is going to jolt things so that's going to be great for overload so I may go with this combo, Communal Pickups and Elemental Fury, but you also can get Refreshing Pickups. You don't necessarily need this because of the Fallen Sunstar 
are, but let's say you are in a situation where you're getting kind of starved of abilities for whatever reason, the way you use your abilities, you're a little bit happy with your abilities and you burn them all real quick. Uh, refreshing pickups will make it to where you have that additional bo boost to your abilities to your least powered ability. And so that's something that you can swap out for. If you pick up an elemental orb, it's going to grant you power to your least charge ability. Uh, Semi-Auto Striker may come into some of the other builds, and it's okay. Uh, like I said, some of the weapons it ties into, but as I look at it, you have to have fewer than two stacks, and a lot of the build setups I have are going to build stacks high, so I'm not sure how often I'm actually going to end up using that one. I may play around with it every now and then. And now the last section is going to be a theme through all my builds. You're going to hear me repeat this through the different recordings probably. Monochromatic Maestro is huge. Dealing elemental ability damage increases matching weapon damage, and elemental weapon damage increases matching ability damage. That's just a huge synergy. So as you're doing damage with your arc weapons, your abilities are going to do more damage. If you're doing damage with your abilities, it's going to reverse it back. And it's going to go back and forth, back and forth, giving you a 10% bonus for 5 seconds. And I don't know what the cooldown is. I don't know if it's something that you could just do forever more. If you can just kind of keep that up, that's going to be amazing. But even with the cooldown, still very nice, still super free. Rapid Fire Ranger is going to be very specific to like bows and scouts, things like that that you're using from long range. That's going to give you weaken on the targets. That's going to be really nice and high in content, but probably not something that I'll be running normally. The Elemental Embrace, that's going to give you uh, elemental buffs uh, giving you recovery and damage resistance against combatants of the matching type. That's kind of niche. You probably won't use that one very often. Uh, elemental munitions, however, combatant final blows with elemental orbs and even tangles have a chance to drop special heavy ammo. That one's probably going to be stuck on most of my characters because I always like having additional ammo generation. And since, as you saw on the helmet, the mod changes are going to make it to where I probably won't run a lot of finders, I'll probably be running this instead, and that's going to free up a lot more room in my builds. That's probably going to be one I use the most. Frenzied Stacks is okay. Your armor charges grant bonus damage to your Throne Tangles or Elemental Orbs, and your armor charges decay. They're going to decay anyways with a lot of your builds. Uh, that one's okay. That one I might use in some instances, or we might find some nice hidden gem builds with that, but not particularly for this one. So for this one, it's going to be Monochromatic Maestro or Elemental Munitions together, or Monochromatic Maestro and Rapid Fire, depending on the situational setup on that. And that's pretty much the build. You're going to see it here in, in the kind of the background. Again, the loop is to throw your grenade, you know, pop your rift, get that arc soul going, throw your melee out there as well, and just over and over and over again. As you'll see, too, when I'm using my rocket launcher, same thing. Your blowout, you're going to build your orbs count up. You're going to have explosive light. You're going to shoot your rocket, throw a grenade, shoot your rocket, just chew through heavy uh, groups of adds. And it's going to make a huge difference when it comes to dealing with tanky stuff like champions. It's for you to be able to get in there, shoot your rocket, throw your grenade, shoot your rocket, burst it down, stun it, throw your elemental orb. It's going to be really nice. And again, I, I just really look forward to next season getting that unlocked. I've done some bounty prep so that I can get to that third column quicker so that I can get the elemental orbs unlocked. Uh, it's going to be really nice, and I look forward to posting videos on that of me using the elemental orb builds and just in general having fun with this new setup next season because I've got to try to do something considering how dreadful the game has been lately. you got to find fun somehow, and these builds hopefully will shake things up a little bit to where we at least get a good four, five, six, seven weeks of fun before things start to get a little stale while we're waiting for the final shape. And so we're going to move into the next build here. Now for the second Warlock build, even though Strand uh, Suspend has been nerfed, it's still strong and it's still very usable and it's just going to be kind of like a nice cherry on top in this case. Uh, a lot of this is going to be focused on the Tangle generations now, the way the Tangles work with your Wanderer, and you're just using Mindspun Invocation as kind of a backdrop to that and having the Shackle Grenade as just a nice way to protect yourself when you're out there getting your Tangles. Uh, you can drop that into a group of enemies, pick your Tangle up, start the process from there. And so since I'm already here in the subclass, let's go over the subclass again. Brood Weaver, you only got the one super. I'm using the Healing Rift. Uh, this is going to be my survivability. The build itself is going to generate this quite a bit, so you're going to have a Healing Rift a lot of the times. The Arcane Needle is going to be doing a lot of work because it's paired with the Exotic that's going to give it the additional Corruption damage. And then from there, it's going to then use the Weaver's Trance, and then it's going to suspend things around it. Even though it's for less time, it's still going to be just enough for you to get your whole rotation going. Now for the fragments, I'm using the Thread of Fury, so damaging targets with the Tangle is going to give me melee energy, and that's going to be kind of feeding back into the Arcane Needle. 
I'm going to be using Threat of Warding, so picking up an orb is going to grant me Woven Mill, that's my survivability. I'm going to be using Threat of Mind, defeating suspended targets gives me class ability energy, and that's going to be how I get my healing rift. And then I'm going to be using the Threat of Generation, even though they nerfed it, still dealing damage generates grenade energy. It's, it's just an easy setup for this particular build. And then with my stats, I'm going with the 7 Resilience, because I'm going to pair that with Font of Endurance, which when I pick up an orb will give me 100 Resilience. I'm going to have my 90 Recovery and my 90 Discipline. I uh, would have 100 Discipline, but of course the thread is going to reduce that, and so that's fine. I'll just take that. I get my grenade back plenty easy with this particular build. And let's go into that now. For my helmet, I'm running Harmonic Siphon. That's going to give me an easy one-cost mod that's going to help me generate orbs whenever I get Strand kills with Strand Weapon Final Blows to be specific. And then I'm running Arc Siphon because I'm using the Thunderlord for my heavy. Now this one's going to be more expensive next season, so I may have to change the setup next season as far as the uh, mods go, but I will definitely be running Harmonic and Arc. And then whatever I have room for left, this is what I'll be running here. But right now I'm running a Finder mod. Of course you can always change that up. You can decide that you may not want to run a Finder mod, and you can run one of the Super mods, so you can get Super on Grenade kills. I wouldn't really run this one because sometimes the Shackle Grenade kills, the explosions, don't really count it perfectly. I'd probably rather go with the hands-on because of the melee focus on this one. And then, of course, your Super Final Blows can give additional orbs if you want power preservation, but nobody really runs this one. I'd probably run hands-on next season instead. Now back to the build. Uh, in the arm slot, of course, we're going to be using the Necrotic Grip. And for those that don't know, Necrotic Grip, that's going to give you dots on your melee abilities. And specifically, when you look at it here, it's going to do poison damage, and it's going to spread that poison damage once something dies to things around it. And it's also going to spread the sever as well. So it's not only going to just spread the initial poison damage, but then you're going to have the reduced damage back to you. So that's going to also contribute to your survivability. So it puts this, for example, in a room of enemies, and you get your needle out there. The poison damage from the gauntlets are going to get the kills. They're going to spread poison to others. It's going to spread the sever to others. It's just a nice stacking benefit. And if you are using some type of weapon or sorrow, you do get a little bit of benefit as well on top of that. Reviewing the chest piece, I just have a resistance mod. It can be any resistance. I just happen to be set on arc. Importantly, the font of endurance. I do run this one because when I pick up an orb, that's going to give me my 30 resilience, maxing out my resilience. And then I run some type of reserve mod. In this case, it's arc reserves because I was using Thunderlord. And so you'd probably just rather run arc reserves and font of endurance and not have any resistance if you're doing regular content. If not, you'd have to give up the arc reserves to make sure you have proper resistances on that. Now for the boots, importantly I'm running the grenade cooldown each time I pick up an orb because that's going to be my least generated item now that they've nerfed the threat of generation, so innervation is super important. I'm running invigoration as well so that I get my melee up because that's going to be kind of the most damage dealing ability that I have, getting the threat of needle out there. And then from here I'm going to be running stacks on stacks. That way I pick up an orb of power and I get one additional stack of armor charge to keep those stacks up for my grenade kickstart and for my melee kickstart. Uh, you don't can you can choose to run one or the other. I was running both just to kind of see how they decided to kind of come through and it worked pretty well. If anything, uh, next season because of the way that I'm not going to have the one energy for the melee kickstart, I would probably get rid of the grenade kickstart and go with something like causing damage with a grenade gives your melee cooldown for this and then I would then switch off the impact induction causing damage with the melee gives grenades. So I would probably do this next season instead and then keep my armor charges for something else like the, for example for the Phantom Endurance to keep that up. So that's kind of how it would look next season. And of course it would be more expensive because I would not have the one cost mods. So I would do these two and then if I had room get the heavy handed on top of that or just do heavy handed in one of them depending on what I was running. Now for the bond, if I switch over to my Deep Explorer bond, you'll see now I have 100 discipline because that makes the difference that getting that a little additional bump to max my discipline out. And then from here, uh, I'll have Bomber, Powerful Attraction, and Time Dilation. If that's going to be the setup that I'd want. Powerful Attraction, that way I don't have to run and pick up orbs as much. And then Time Dilation, of course, is going to give my armor charge more time. And that's just going to keep my survivability going with Fawn of Endurance. And then, of course, these are going to be generating my abilities, and so that's kind of how I would have it set up for next season. 
and uh, when it comes to the artifact, the artifact choices are going to be really nice because there's a lot of strand centric things and a lot of tangle centric things and we're going to go into that now. Now for weapons in this case, if you're running Unstoppable Fusion, I would recommend Riptide with Chill Clip still uh, or any other uh, fusion with Chill Clip. I just particularly have Riptide with the auto loading and Chill Clip. Really nice roll. You can also use uh, Pressurized Precision as well. So that way you can kind of stay in the strand thing and get kind of the additional strand weapon final blows. That's going to bring in the usage of Thanatonautic Tangles, which is going to be in the third column, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, for Unstoppable Scout Rifle, I recommend Taraxipos with Rapid Fire Ranger. Those two together are going to be really nice. And just to cover Rapid Fire Ranger, that's going to be Rapid Precision Hits giving a weaken effect to your uh, weapon. So anything that you hit, big targets, those are going to be weakened, do less damage to you. That's going to be a nice combo. And uh, from there, yeah, if you're going Overload Hand Cannon, then I would recommend Round Robin and also Collective Action. Collective Action because you're going to be getting a lot of pickups with your Tangles, and that's going to give you that additional bonus damage. And of course, Round Robin, it's Strand. It's going to synergize. It's a really nice weapon. If you're going to go Anti-Barrier Auto Rifle, which I will as well, I really like Perpetualis. My role is Killing Wind and Golden Tricorn. And since I'll be getting a lot of kills from either grenade kills that count as the Shackle kills, or I'm going to be getting kills off of the Needle, I'm going to always be have that 50% additional damage going, so it's a really strong weapon weapon when you get it rolling. And then of course you can also use Centrifuge. Uh, Centrifuge is really nice. It's not going to synergize uh, as far as having a exotic rifle, but it's just like really nice to be running and gunning. And then Monte Carlo in the primary slot. Monte Carlo is going to be really strong this season. Getting you your melees back so you can keep your melees going is going to be strong. But when you get that Makarov chain and you convert that into the new stab with the bayonet, that's going to be really nice. I'm not going to be really close to things in these scenarios. What I probably will be using it for is champions. Stun the champion, convert it, stab the champion, bye bye champion. That's probably how I would use it with this particular uh, build, since this build's kind of a longer range build, but still really cool, and I'm looking forward to using that as well. And now for overload machine guns, you can actually use the circular logic machine gun. That's going to be the strand machine gun, so that's kind of tie into your strand. And in my case, though, I'm going to be using the Thunderlord quite a bit because the Thunderlord just wrecks, and it's really nice. Uh, it's got that ability to just like erase champions, and so that's probably going to be my heavy. A lot of content is Thunderlord, uh, and uh, just a really fun gun to use. Now, as far as for the additional artifacts that we're looking at in the season, the second column, there is a lot of combos. So like arc strand combo, for example, that combines it into one. That'll actually help a lot on the helmet mod so that you can get the uh, arc and strand orb generation in one mod. That's going to be probably what I'll set up on on this particular one. Or you can just choose to go with like the origin perk specialization or an additional champion mod. But me, I'll probably take Diviner's Discount to have that flexibility for scav mods. And then the arc strand siphon mod since I'm using an arc weapon on top of my strand weapons. Uh, for the third column, the Thanatotic Tangles. That's going to be really strong, and that's going to be the one that I would choose with this particular build. Strand Weapon Final Blows have a chance to generate a tangle, so that would be me going over to Circular Logic as a gun, and then maybe having an exotic in my primary or secondary slot. And then from there, that weapon would then be my kind of generating weapon. But in this case, the way I have it set up right now, Perpetualis is going to be my Strand Final Blow weapon, and since it does so much damage with that plus 50%, it's just going to be chewing through things, creating tangles, Throwing the Wanderer Tangles, they're going to suspend stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to, again, get into that content where it's kind of enemy dense and just strand everything up, run everything down, and then, of course, now have the ability to have additional damage based on if somebody happens to ruin your rotation with communal pickups. Uh, so for the second choice, in this case, you don't have to choose the elemental orb since you're going to be a tango only. So you can choose a specialization too, or you can just go back again and pick an additional champion mod, which is probably what I'll do. But going back to the fourth column, communal pickups is a must for this build. People will steal your tangles. It's super annoying. I probably say this in every single build whenever I talk about this three communal pickups, but it's going to reduce your tangle cooldown to five seconds, or by five seconds, should I say, and then you can gain that bonus damage with your strand weapons for 10 seconds. So in this case, if somebody picks up your Wanderer tangle, which is super powerful, and you kind of give them that side eye, you don't have to worry too much, you're going to get that additional bonus, just focus on chewing through things with your additional 10 uh, seconds of damage that's probably going to stack with most things. 
Now, the next thing you can run is you can run Refreshing Pickups. Picking up a Tangle is going to give you uh, energy ability to your least powered ability. That's going to keep you rolling. That's really nice. And if you happen to be using a bow or a scout rifle like Taraxipos, for example, you can use Semi-Auto Striker, and that's going to give you additional armor charges. I'm probably going to go with Refreshing Pickups more often just because I like having the abilities ready for when I need them. And then, of course, you can also do uh, the... Elemental Fury, so when champions are stunned, you get bonus damage to your abilities, and that's another thing that you can do. But again, probably going to go with communal pickups and refreshing pickups. Now, with all of my builds that you're going to see in this one, there is a theme. Monochromatic Maestro is super strong, dealing elemental to ability damage and getting that increased weapon damage uh, with the matching ability damage for 10%, 5 seconds. Super nice, stacks with most things, and so that's just going to be. Probably my go-to, no matter what, this next season. It's just gonna every bill is just gonna have monochromatic maestro because it's just free damage. You don't have to think about it; it just happens. That's where I would go with that. Uh, of course, rapid fire ranger is the flex if you're using something like a scout rifle. If you're playing long, that's really nice because you get that weakened effect, especially in higher end content. Uh, Elemental embrace. It gives you the uh, recovery and damage resistance. If you feel like you're a little squishy with this build because you're running a little lower on the resilience uh, until you get your orbs, then maybe. But I don't have a problem. I'm so used to my build. I won't run that. I'll probably be running most elemental munitions. Because you have the Wanderer uh, perk, that's going to be doing more damage, and they're going to be buffing it next season. And so you're going to be getting a lot more kills with that Wanderer tangle and that's going to give you special and heavy ammo and so just be drowning in special and heavy ammo and it, it's going to be really nice so that's probably what i would go with is elemental munitions and that build with monochromatic maestro and again that's probably going to be a theme in a lot of the builds see going forward from here now let's cover the titan build i only have one build in this particular video because on the titan build there's a lot of videos to go for but this was kind of the newer fresher build uh with the strand and i really like the strand titan and so with the changes to the tangles and the way that you can generate them with the artifact, this is kind of the build that I wanted to focus on for Titans. Of course with Syntheseps, that's going to be the main portion of the build, and the reason why I bring in the Syntheseps is because I'm working with Shet Storm as my main kind of damage dealer of the build, and then I'm adding the Into the Fray, so that way if I destroy a tangle, I get Woven Mail for nearby allies as well, and when you have Woven Mail, you get regeneration for your melee, which is going to feed back into the Flechette Storm, of course, with the Frenzied Blade. I'm running the Grapple Grenade with general content. That way you can kind of fly around and throw your grapples, grapple onto them, and then get the grapple melee off. It's kind of a nice way to generate more energy, because right now I'm doing the uh, Focusing Strike, so when I do my Focusing Strike, I get class ability energy. And then I use Momentum Transfer, so that way when I use my grenade, I get more melee. And of course, whenever you do your attack after the grapple grenade and you get that melee kill, that will also give you a bump in energy normally. And then when you're using your melee kickstart, your melee kickstart's going to kick you back energy, so it kind of all feeds together with these three to kind of feed your abilities and keep your abilities topped off as best it can. Now with the stats, you're going to want to max out Strength and resilience. With my build and the armor that I had for my Titan, I'm with 70 resilience because I'm actually using the Font of Endurance. So anytime that I pick up an orb, I get my additional 30 resilience as part of the way that these fonts work. So I'm at 100 resilience anytime I pick up an orb of power, and it's really easy to grab orb of powers with this build because you're going to be generating a ton of uh, orbs from your strand weapon kills. And if you wanted to swap out, for example, melee kickstart for a firepower, that's another great way to do it. You can swap out some of these as well if you don't need the stats for a firepower, so that way you have additional orbs on the ground. So you have a ton of orbs. You can also run uh, Kinetic as well if you have some time. So instead of getting your super, you switch over to Kinetic Siphon. And then with my build, particularly, I'm using Monte Carlo or Quicksilver Storm. And so with Monte Carlo, that's going to help me generate the melee energy back. All the kills that I'm getting with Monte Carlo are going to give me the Kinetic Siphon. So that way I get the additional orbs and just kind of like an orb generating machine in that case. And it's pretty flexible what you can use. I'm going to go over the build really quick first, then I'm going to go over the weapons that synergize really well with it, and then I'm going to go over the uh, the specific build itself. So for the fragments that I'll be using, I'm going to be going with Thread of Warning. So when you pick up an order of power, you get Woven Mail. Now that does knock your resilience, but in this case we're getting that back with the font. 
so that way we're always at 100 resilience from picking up these orbs. So we get woven mail, we've got 100 resilience, it just kind of keeps moving along on the build. I'm going with Threat of Transmutation, because when you have woven mail and you get final blows, those create tangles, so that way you're kind of always having that woven mail, you're creating tangles with the new lower tangle generation rate, with the, uh, the changes that they've made, and also with some of the uh, ways that you can generate tangles now through the artifact, this is a very strong uh, thread. Now the threat of isolation, uh, in this case I chose this one because I'm rocking Monte Carlo and I'm also rocking Quicksilver Storm as my primary weapons and so I get a lot of rapid precision hits so that means Sever is going out. A lot of enemies are doing less so it makes you even more tankier because they're doing less damage to you and that burst is pretty big. Also it helps you clear out adds and things that may survive your Flechette Storm so it's really nice to have the threat of isolation. And then the Threat of Fury, what we're looking at with this one is that when you do damage uh, with a Tangle, you get melee energy back, and that's going to include destroying Tangles, so you don't even have to like pick them up and throw them. When you're picking up and throwing Tangles too, another thing to keep in mind is that the Tangles on the Titan don't seek as well as like the Wanderer Tangles do, for example, with the Warlock. So you want to make sure that you're throwing them a little bit higher so that they hit their targets, or just shoot them in place so that way you're getting the damage to whatever's around them. And so that's the build for the subclass. Now I'm going to go into the weapons that synergize really well with the build. And so again, like I mentioned, I'm using Monte Carlo and Quicksilver Storm as my primary. Uh, the Monte Carlo, of course, to generate the melee, and the Quicksilver Storm, just because it has a really nice synergy, uh, you're going to be able to take advantage of the origin perks, so that way you have the additional nanotech rack rockets next season, so that still kicks in uh, with your artifact, and you're going to want to be grabbing those because they'll push your artifact further along. And it's just like an all-around, just a beast weapon. Uh, the additional damage that you're getting to whenever you do the grenade damage and things like that, to have that, that little bit of flexibility makes this build really fun. Uh, using harsh language, or I'm using explosive personality, depending on my needs, in my middle slot, they have uh, either Envious Assassin, which will be improved next season, so it'll actually auto-load better for you, and then Explosive Personality auto-loading as well with Disruption Break. You probably want to run this one if you're running like Barrier Champions, for example, and you don't need the other uh, of the two, which I would run like a Tarnished Metal, for example, for overloads. And, uh, and this season, well next season, it's going to be Overload Hand Cannon, or Overload Machine Gun. And so right now, as you can see, I'm rocking the circular logic, so I can easily just go overload machine gun with the circular logic, which keeps into the strand build, and then I can have that flexibility to use harsh language to debuff things around, or to use explosive personality to give disruption break to Monte Carlo to do the additional damage. And so that's nice, and that's something that I would stay uh, aware of when you're when you're rocking this build. If you're trying to rock it in higher end content, you may even want to switch out from grapple to the uh, shackle grenade, just because it still gives that that really strong control of champions and tankier enemies. That way you just make sure that you don't die because you're going to be all in the mix with your Flechette Storm. And you don't have to get super close, but you do have to get close enough that your Flechette Storm doesn't kind of wander off and attack things that are on the peripheral that hits exactly what you want. And when you're setting a champion, having all three of your melees to just do like a heavy Flechette Storm attack, and you have smaller enemies around you to kick in with your Syntheseps can really wreck a champion. So it's a really nice build in that aspect to do a bunch of burst damage in a short period of time. And of course with Monte Carlo, not only are you going to have have the ability to regenerate your melees quickly, but next season when you get the catalyst you're going to have that really nice conversion to where you get your flechette storms off and whatever health the champion has left, you convert your Monte Carlo attack straight into a melee attack and then you get that nice little stab using the bayonet of Monte Carlo which people have been begging for for years. So that's going to be really cool and that's the reason why I want Monte Carlo on this build because I want to be able to have that fun to get in there, get in that mix. You can even grapple in convert it, boom, get your melee off, and then start doing your Flechette Storm out. So it's a really, really nice build when it comes to just having overall fun, and you're not trying to be too well, like min-max with it. This is just a really nice overall fun build to play with, and I'll be playing this one a lot on my Titan. So now let's go over to the full build itself. So with the Titan, with the helmet, uh, I do have Artifice Armor, so that does help with some of the stats. If you don't have Artifice Armor, that's fine. You don't need these additional stats sometimes, depending on the armor that you have, especially if you were grinding uh, for some of the Celestial Armor that has the, uh, the higher stat rolls. Uh, and it depends on which season, of course, you started at. If you're newer, it's going to be the Solstice Armor. If you're a little bit older in the game, then you can have the Test Allegiance Armor. Really spiky armor, very good. And so you can still have these nice stats even without Artifice Armor. But what I'll be running 
is I'll be running a, a harmonic siphon. It only costs one energy, and that'll get my strand weapons to get that additional benefit. I'll be running kinetic siphon. Then I'll be running either special ammo or heavy ammo finisher normally. Uh, that kind of is how I determine what I'm trying to use the most. So in this case, it would be heavy if I was using my machine gun. If I had something else in the special slot, or if I was using like the navigator as my primary weapon in this build, I would run the special just to make sure I have the, enough ammo in the navigator since they nerfed double special for the next season. Now the uh, gloves, of course, Syntheseps, buffs melee range, give you a surrounded buff. Uh, it's just kind of old trusty. In this case, I'm rocking melee kickstart. Momentum transfer, again, causing damage with grenade, reduces your melee cooldown, and that's even counting the grapple. So when you grapple your tangles, which you're going to have all over the place, and do your melee off the grapple, that's going to give you that bump from momentum transfer. And then from there, when you're doing your melee attack, that's going to give you back your class ability, which ties into the class item. So I'm popping my class ability often, using outreach to give me a little bit bump in my uh, melee. You could do double outreach if you wanted to. I'm running proximity ward because I was running a little higher in content. So that helps survive and give you time to get your region going for your health in the middle of a battle. You get that overshot and it's very strong. I'm running time dilation to give my armor charges a little bit longer so that I can take advantage of it. I'm running elemental charge to get the armor charges because now that you have the tangles you can actually destroy tangles and that'll give you the armor charges so you can just kill them in their place uh, when you obviously when you throw them in things like that I imagine it counts as well I have to pay attention to that next time I use this build but I'm pretty sure it would count still I'm running invigoration so I'm gonna get melee energy anytime I pick up an orb and I'm running the better already so that I get health regen in case I get in trouble I just run over an orb and my health starts regenerating I'm running Fawn of Endurance again because that's going to give me that 30 additional resilience so that'll take me to my tier 10 once I pick up an orb. And I don't have anything in the mod slots because that's going to be flexible to you. Uh, next season uh, there's going to be the, uh, the additional scabs which you'd want on your boots and so you may decide to make a change next season from some of these to a scav mod if you're running the scavenger perks. And then uh, for here I would just pick again whatever your fighting most next season. I, I don't know exactly what energy we're going to be fighting just yet, or what the enemies are going to be rocking, so I'm just going to change that based on that. And if you don't have anything, you can just do charged up to get your armor charges higher faster and have your armor charges longer. And so for now, I'm just going to throw that on there uh, just so that, you know, it's filled out. And so that's pretty much the main build. Now I'm going to go into the artifact. So let's start off with the first column. This is going to be the column in which you choose your champion mods. So for this build, for the Titan Flechette Storm build, it's kind of a tanky strand build again. Uh, if you're running the auto rifle anti-barrier, which I will be doing because I'm going to be doing Monte Carlo and Quicksilver Storm mainly, uh, those are going to be the two exotics that I would say that are going to synergize really well. Uh, the other option that you have is going to be Rufus Fury or Petralis. If you're running some other exotic that you feel like is going to fit this build really well, Rufus is really strong. Petralis with the, the uh, Killing Wind Tricorn roll is going to be really strong, especially because you're going to be getting a lot of melee kills. And if you do the uh, Grapple Grenade, you're going to be getting the Grapple Grenade kills, which are going to count as grenade kills to really pop off and make Petralis super strong because it's going to be at its max damage and it, it really stays throughout the fight as you're uh, being mobile and you're getting a lot of your ability kills which this is going to be an ability kill build. If you're running Unstoppable Scout I would go with Taraxipos or Glissando 47. Those are going to be the two scout rifles that have the strand on there. Um, There's some other options in the energy slots but for me, those are going to be the ones that I think I'd roll with this build. I'm just going to stick with the strand. That way I get the additional benefits of using strand weapons to create tangles. And that's going to be further in the further columns. Uh, for the overload hand cannon, of course, you can run round robin. And then the collective action roll that we were running this season with strand will actually have a really nice synergy because there's a whole lot of pickups that you're going to be doing. And so that's going to give you the collective action bonus. And you're going to just have strand pickups all over the place. You can even pick up the orbs of the other teammates. And that's going to be a new thing that with the communal pickup ability that we'll be talking about in a little bit, that it, it doesn't penalize you when people pick up your orbs or when people pick up your tangles. You actually get a bonus for that. So that happens to me all the time. People are just annoying like that. I was thinking that maybe they should make it to where you can only pick up yours and they can't pick up yours, but this is fine. You know, this is a nice change, and I hope they carry it forward, uh, the, the uh, communal pickups, into the other seasons until they figure out a better way to handle this. 
Uh, now with Unstoppable Fusion, uh, Press Rise Precision is still a good fusion rifle for keeping that strand theme going. I personally like Riptide with Choclip. You can also run anything else with Choclip as well. Uh, there's the uh, the Raid Fusion from Vow. A couple of other things that have nice Choclips. There's even the World Drop uh, Choclip roll. Those are going to be the rolls that are going to be really useful because slowing still takes care of overloads. Shattering still takes care of unstoppables, even if it may take three or four shots now to make them shatter instead of a few because they're kind of nerfing Choclip a little bit. Still a nice thing to have. Still kind of a versatile weapon to keep when you're using a uh, Choclip roll. Uh, now, for the next section, you can pick whatever strand, uh, you know, as far as like if you're doing like a different build, whatever strand combo build that you'd like. But in this case, for me, since I'm already on strand, I'm going to be using the Origin Perk Specialization 1. So that way I get the better nanotech rockets if I'm using Quicksilver. And then I'm going to be using Diviner's Discount if I ever want to run scab mods. So that way they're discounted. I believe it's be discounted down to 1. Now here's where it starts to get good in the third column, uh, the thematotonic tangles. That's going to be really strong because now your strand weapon final blows, they have a chance to generate a tangle on top of all of your other stuff that's going on. So that's just like one more bump, that additional bump. And then since you're not running any elemental orbs, if you're going to choose something in this column instead of choosing additional champ mods prior to you, then you can also pick the orb, uh, sorry, the origin perk specialization two, which is going to give you the overcharge for these uh, anything that has the additional origin traits to fall into here going forward, even the new redacted one, which we still don't know what it is just yet. Uh, now in the next column. You can run Overload Machine Gun, since I'm running a machine gun, that would be very helpful in this pace. Uh, Elemental Fury is okay uh, when you're studying champions to get additional bonuses from things, but I wouldn't run it in this build because it specifically says to, to Elemental Orb damage, not to Strand damage, so I don't think it could be useful in this build. Communal Pickup is definitely a must though, because people are going to be grabbing your Strand Tangles all the time, and you want to make sure that when they grab your Strand Tangle, you're going to get a reduced Strand Tangle timer, and then you get bonus weapon damage for 10 seconds, which is amazing. And then uh, if you're not running the machine gun for overloads, if you don't have to, refreshing pickups is what I would use. That's going to be picking up a Tangle, giving you your least powered ability additional energy back, and so that way you keep that uh, flow going of all of your abilities. Now in the last column, there's going to be a theme in a lot of these builds that I'm doing, and you'll notice again that uh, Monochromatic Maestro is pretty much in every one of these. It's just such a strong perk that when you deal uh, elemental ability damage, it increases the matching weapon damage, so any strand weapons that you're rocking are going to get that additional damage, and it's 10% for 5 seconds, and I'm pretty sure it stacks with everything. And you'll hear me say this again in all of the artifact sections because it's just such a good perk. Uh, now there is some play for Rapid Fire Ranger because you get the additional uh, rapid precision hits to weaken the target. But for me, I think the uh, elemental munitions, whenever you have combatant final blows with tangles to give you the additional uh, special or heavy drop chance, that's the way to go for me, is the elemental munitions, and that'll be the one that I cap it off. So for the most part, I'm going to be almost always running elemental munitions and monochromatic maestro, unless I'm doing some special build. But for this one, those are the two that I would recommend. And so you've seen the gameplay. Again, it's just a simple setup. So you're going to want to start off with your Facet Storm, dump your Facet Storm. From there, if you're using the grapple, you're going to grapple your tangle that you've created so that you get that free grapple. You're going to get in there and you're going to use the grapple melee to get your energy going again. From there, you can pick up the tangle, throw the tangle to get the additional melee from your thread. And then from there, you start to use your Monte Carlo or you start to use your Quicksilver Storm to get that damage out. You pop your shield to get that additional melee back. Since I'm running Monte Carlo, I'm just going to lean into Monte Carlo, and that'll be kind of how I do that back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's the rotation, and it's very, very flexible. So like I said, if you need to flush that storm out of things, uh, if you need to uh, grapple out of things, you have that ability. You can pick up your, your strand and uh, your tangle, should I say, and throw your tangle across the map, grab onto the tangle, get your melee off. From there, start it over again with your Fushet Storm, dump your Fushet Storm, and just have that looping over and over and over again. Just such a fun build. Really cool. Definitely hope you guys try it out and you really enjoy it in, in this next season.
Now this is one of my favorite builds as far as the fun factor goes. I call this the Kitchen Sink Frosties Hunter. And the reason we call it the Kitchen Sink is because you're just going to be throwing everything at them. Even maybe the Kitchen Sink. It's just crazy how many throwables you get in this build. And it's, it's just a lot of fun. I mean, you just can't replicate the ability to just throw, 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 and just have these combos, back-to-back -back combos. Even before I'm going to get access to the elemental orbs next season, this build is a blast already. It's still a blast. And so let's start off with the subclass. Of course, we're going to do Gunslinger. I'm going to be using the Blade Barrage. This is a short uh, cooldown on it. it. does a bunch of damage. Knock them down. Uh, your Solar Super, of course, is going to be enhanced with that. It's going to have additional throwing knives for you there. And uh, it's going to also give you that additional benefit of whenever you're Radiant, your final blows with your equipped throwing knives are going to refund your energy. And so that's going to be the knife trick that we're going to be using to throw the fan. And that's going to tie into the Ember of Torches. So anytime that you throw your knives, you're going to get Radiant. So it just creates this loop where you have pretty much infinite knife trick as long as you get a kill with the knife. Uh, then we're going to be using Gunpowder Gamble because that's that one additional throwable. And since they've kind of buffed everything when you have the additional fragment slots now with most things, it's not going to hamper you at all to take these two together. And so when you defeat targets with solar abilities, uh, solar debuffs, or solar weapons, you get that imp improvised explosive. It's going to change your grenade symbol, and then from there you're going to throw that. You can either stick it to a target and then shoot it, or you can shoot it mid-air to cause the ignition. It's really cool, and it's going to be a lot of fun in addition to the elemental orbs. I'm using the gambler's dodge, because any time that I miss on my knife trick, I'm just going to dodge near an enemy, get that knife trick back. I keep that rotation going. And I'm going to be using Firebolt Grenade because it's just one of the shorter grenades. It reaches out and scorches a lot of things to help with some of the additional ignitions. And since you're using the Ember of Ashes, just going to stack things up to make those ignitions happen more often. And especially with the Gunpowder Gamble, it's really nice. So the, uh, the way that this is going to work, you're going to throw out your grenade first. Then you're going to throw your knife as many times as you need to, as much as you want in there until you get your elemental orbs. You're going to throw your elemental orbs. If you mess up with your knives, you're going to dodge. And you're just going to have that back and forth, back and forth with the gambler's dodge popping in between. So you're basically just going to be throwing stuff almost more often than you're shooting things. Now, the additional fragments, you're going to be using the Ember of Empyrean. So with that, the Solar Weapon Ability Final Blows, they extend the duration of Restoration and Radiant. So whenever you get your Radiant and you're getting the additional Weapon uh, Final Blows, that's going to keep that Radiant going so that you can also keep the Knife Trick going. It's just a really nice synergy with that Fragment. I'm using Ember of Searing, so when you defeat Scorched Targets, you also get Melee Energy and Fire Sprites. So just in case I do miss a couple knives, this will help me get that back sooner. I also get that benefit of 10 recovery, and then fire sprites, of course, as you see there, they give you grenade energy as well. So it's a really nice setup there too. And like I've talked about, again, Ember of Ash is more Scorch, and then Ember of Torches, that's going to give you the Radiant. And that's with powered melee attacks. Not just final blows, but just attacks in general are going to make you Radiant. Which will also help too with the anti-barriers. You can reliably throw your knives at, an anti, at, at a barrier champion, and then from there, that'll get you Radiant so that you can then burn through its shield, and you can stun them without anything that's specifically for them. So that'll give you some flexibility in your build. Now let's go into the build itself. And so for the build, I'm going to be really focusing on trying to keep my generation strong with my abilities. And so let's just start off with the helmet real quickly. I'm using Harmonic Siphon because I'm in my solar subclass. So that's going to synergize with my solar weapons to get orbs out there. Those orbs are going to then in turn help me with my ability generation. I'm also using Kinetic Siphon just in case I happen to get a kill with my Kinetic Weapon and I'm running Kinetic. That'll be the way to go. If you're not running anything that's going to take advantage of that, then you could just switch that off. You could even do double hands-on, because again, when you're getting melee kills, you're getting that bonus super, which is going to give you a really quick blade barrage, which you should then dump so that you can continue to have that additional flow going. Uh, now, I'm running a resilience of 10, so that because this is again PvE build versus PvP, you always want to try to get your resilience as high as possible for survivability. And I'm running a strength of 90. I couldn't get that additional one uh, 5 in there just the way that it's set up here, and so I just left it alone. And so 9 is good enough. Uh, you're you're going to be getting back your melee so much with all of the other synergies. It doesn't really matter. 9 is good enough. And then everything else is just extra. Uh, so the next thing we're looking at is impact induction. So any time that you cause damage with a melee attack, that's going to reduce your grenade. That's going to keep your loop going. Heavy-handed, your powered melee final blows are going to create orbs, so it's just orbs will be raining down with your unlimited knife trick. 
and then fastball of course helps you with your grenade throws that way you get your firebolt in a good spot and also your your uh, gamble in a good spot so that you can detonate them and the gamble is what's really nice with this one and that's where this really takes the cake whenever you get that additional fast kick with your gamble and get it out before somebody else does so you can make sure you clear everything and then get that loop going and so it's nice when you're playing with randoms to make sure that you're getting your gamble in a good spot to get the maximum benefit from it kind of best bang for your buck I'm running arc resistance because I was just running it, it just any random resistance is arc and void. I was happy to do that when I was farming for bounties. I was running through a lot of arc using wizards and then void. I was running the uh, moon stuff, so a lot of void damage coming out as you between the ogres and some of the uh, acolytes. And then solar reserves for my solar weapons. So because I was running uh, solar heavy, I was actually running the new rocket launcher, well, the rep reprise rocket launcher from the raid with the reconstruction perk. It was really nice, and I'll go over that as well. For the boots, what we're going to be using is innervation, because that's going to give me grenade cooldown anytime I pick up an orb power. And then we're using recuperation, that's going to be my survivability. I'm going to be picking up orbs and getting health back. And it's going to be, uh, usually when I do that, I usually do that with like a dodge with the powerful attraction and I'm behind something. So that's why I do the recuperation versus the one where you get a health bump. Uh, elemental charge is strong because I'm going to be picking up a lot of fire sprites. So that's going to help get more uh, armor charges. Bomber, of course, because the grenade is what we're going to be kind of leaning on with a lot of the throwing. And uh, without the course elemental orbs, which we'll get into as well with the new artifact stuff. And then Reaper, anytime I do happen to dodge to get my knife back, I'm going to get an orb from that as well. So overall, just a lot of ability spam, ability spam, and it's just really fun. So now let's go into the artifact, and I'm going to show you the gameplay while I'm bringing up the artifact as well. And so you can kind of see what it looks like in the background and how that loop works. One thing to note before we move into the artifact section, I do just want to touch on the Frosty since it's not a very commonly used exotic these days. Some people may not know exactly what it does, but essentially it increases your grenade, melee, and dodge generation while sprinting, and dodging increases your sprint speed. So this one is going to be just passively giving you that additional uh, ability energy so that you can continue to throw your things, so you can continue to keep your knives up, you continue to get your dodge back. And so it's kind of always in the background. It's not something that you have to actively do. Most people are holding the sprint key down, holding the W key whenever you're playing the game in the first place. So it's just always going to be running in the background. If you're not somebody who sprints a whole lot, just make sure that you are doing that because that's a, a nice little way to push yourself to keep your abilities topped off. And like I said, most people aren't going to notice it. It's just passive, but it feels really good whenever you're in there. Now for this build, of course, is a solar build, so there's going to be a lot of new options this season that we really hadn't had the last few seasons, since solar wasn't exactly much of a focus. And so now, for example, with Unstoppable Scout Rifle, Polaris Lance is going to be a nice exotic, or you can use the Staccato Scout Rifle in its place if you're trying to use a Legendary for that. For Overload Hand Cannon, the Epical Integration and Zally's Bane are going to be really nice Legendary options, and Sunshot is going to be a lot of fun if you're using the Exotic on that. Uh, for the Unstoppable Fusion, we're going to be looking at Merciless, Jotun, and Vex being really strong fusions in those scenarios. And uh, Royal Executioner, the Crafted Version, and the Cartesian Coordinate are going to be really nice legendary fusions to be using for the Unstoppable Fusion. If you're using Piercing Bowstring, Tikus, and the Hierarchy of Needs are going to be really nice. The Hierarchy of Needs is going to actually go really good with Rapid Fire Ranger if you're making a build off of that. So that's going to be really cool. And again, just to review, Rapid Fire Ranger is going to give you Rapid Precision Hits uh, weakening the target so that's going to be like a nice little debuff to have kind of a support setup if you're doing legendary i would recommend strident whistle and tyranny of heaven those are two really nice bows for the legendary side of things for the anti-barrier auto uh, tommy's matchbook is actually going to be really fun to use and of course the new monte carlo with the monte carlo catalyst is going to be a lot of fun and since you're going to be in there with your knife trick mixing it up you're going to have a lot of opportunities to use that monte carlo catalyst to get a bunch of damage with the new bayonet stab it will be really nice uh, i actually like the amit flamethrower that i have <laughs> it's the uh, ambitious assassin with the incandescent roll and the incandescent on that is actually enhanced so that way i do a little bit more damage with the scorch on that so it's just like i said just a flamethrower especially once you get it rolling it just kind of leads into itself leads into itself or some big magazines you can also use rufus fury or perpetualis in the legendary slot even though it's a uh, not a solar 
setup if you're using that in the top slot. Those are really nice options, especially in this build. Perpetualis is going to be really strong. The role that I'm using is Killing Wind with Tricorn. Is you're going to be doing a lot of kills with your grenades, a lot of kills with your melees. It's going to be always that 50%, so Perpetualis is going to be really nice to be using with this build. Uh, the Overload Machine Guns, of course, I'd be using the Xenophage or the Air Apparent to have a lot of fun with those since they're solar. You can also use Fixed Odds or Unwavering Duty. I have a really nice Fixed Odds with Incandescent, a lot of fun to use. And so in the actual artifact, though, uh, for the first section, the combos are nice, like the Strands or the Solar Strand combo. But in this case, I probably are just going to go with the Origin Perk. So that way I get the benefits from Origin Perks that use that if I'm using something like that. And then the Diviner's Discount, so that way I can maybe throw a Scab mod here and there to get the Scavengers going. In the next column, the most important thing that you're going to take in this build is going to, of course, be your Elemental Orb Solar. That's going to unlock the ability to make Elemental Orbs when you get Weapon Final Blows. And those are going to be that additional extra thing this next season to have is these thrown solar explosions that scorch targets and that's going to be on top of all of your other throwables so you're going to have your gambler's grenade you're going to have your actual grenade you're going to have your knife <laughs> and you're going to have elemental ores on top of that throwing out a bunch of scorch damage and of course you're running incandescent like i am in some of your weapons there's just going to be a lot of explosions it's going to be a lot of fun like i said everything but the kitchen sink and it feels like you're throwing the sink too now on the next page another important one that i'm going to run pretty much in all of my builds is probably going to be communal pickups because again last season with the strand tangles uh, I was just getting super annoyed with people picking up my strand tangles and wasting my build especially my warlock wanderer build because it was such a strong build but the people wasting my tangles just fear infuriating infuriating so in this case you get rewarded when somebody picks yours up and so you're going to get that additional weapon damage, you're going to get a reduced cooldown for your future orbs, and that's going to last for 10 seconds and stack with most things, so communal pickups is almost a must. And then from there you can mix that up with refreshing pickups if you would like. Uh, that one of course is going to give you energy to your least powered ability. I don't think I really will need that, so I may decide to do something else, like if I'm running a bow or a scout rifle, I would do the semi-auto striker in that case, or just go with an additional champion mod, depending on how my build feels next season, so I'll kind of tweak that. And then on the last one, again, it's going to be a theme, Monochromatic Maestro. When you get that additional elemental ability damage, increasing your weapon damage that matches it, and that's a 10% bonus for 5 seconds, that's going to be really sweet. And then the elemental munitions, when you're getting elemental orb kills, you have a chance to get special or heavy ammo, and that's going to be really nice for keeping your ammo topped off. So those are going to be the setups that I would run. Uh, you can run frenzied stacks as well because your armor chargers get you bonus damage to your elemental orbs. But since you have so much other stuff to throw, like I said, probably best to go with elemental munitions and monochromatic maestro for this build. So enjoy this build. This one's going to be wild, and I can't wait to try this one as well. And just to make sure I'm adequately explaining this properly, I just want to go through this lost sector and just kind of comment over it. As you can see, I just got my gamblers. I threw it. I'm about to throw a grenade and then get another gamblers right behind it. And so it's just amazing. And I throw a third one. Like, it's just crazy. Once you hit all your shots or if you're in like an enemy dense location, you can just throw, 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 and you just have no end to it. And again, I still have my knives to throw. And so here I'm throwing my knives. I'm kind of catching everything. I've got another gamblers. And there it goes. Got my grenade still, so I'm going to get my grenade out there. And now from here, it's just going to town with knives. Got another gamblers. It's just, it's crazy. Like, again, just the amount of stuff that pops off. It's great to take out those guys there in the back. It even reached down and killed the guys at the bottom, which is insane. Again, knives, knives. Got another Gamblers. And you're just smoking everything. Can you imagine just once you get the elemental orbs, now you're going to have orbs to throw in between. So like right now, my grenade's on cooldown, but if I get an orb and I throw the orb here, then by that time my, my grenade's going to be back. And so it's like almost never having a cooldown. Boom, another Gamblers. And when I say gamblers, I mean the gunpowder gamble.
And again, just another gunpowder gamble. And uh, what I'm trying to prioritize again, I'm trying to keep my knife up. I'm trying to make sure I'm, I'm taking advantage of the gunpowder gamble every time it's up. Uh, the knives are going to give me radiant, and then they're going to continue to extend the radiant. And so that's the idea, is that you're getting that additional damage, you're getting that radiant in, you're dropping everything that you can, you're spinning your grenade as soon as you can, because then you're going to get the override with the, the uh, gunpowder gamble. And from here, I could have dodged there and then got my knife back, but I was just kind of focused on getting those guys out of the way because I wanted the next set of ads to come out. And I'm still holding on to my super. Like, I could have used my super and been just fine when the boss came out to melt him with my rockets, but I don't even have to do that. Like, I haven't even had to use my rockets this whole time. And so here, opening up with a knife, I can throw my gunpowder after I do my super, I believe. Yep, there it is. I accidentally stuck the Marauder. You gotta be careful you don't kill yourself with that. And then there it is. That's the end of the Lost Sector, and I just kind of spend a little time just uh, having a little fun shooting some things, and then I'm out. And so that's just a quick overview. I'm gonna move on to the next class now. And last but not least, this is going to be the Raspberry Hunter build. And with the Lucky Raspberry, it's gonna be improved next season so that it's more consistent, meaning that you don't have to hope that you get uh, the last chain to get your grenade back. It's going to be very, very consistent. So it's going to be more like the Warlock build, where you're just kind of generating grenade energy over and over and over again, and you're going to have that ability loop. And so I'm going to go through that now. Let's start again with the subclass setup. So we're on Arc Strider. Super, we're looking at Gathering Storm. Gambler's Dodge in this case, so that I can keep my Tempest Strike as much as possible. I'm running Combination Blow just because it's got a low cooldown. And then you have to run, of course, Arc Bull Grenade to synergize with your exotic chest piece. The other, uh, the other aspect is going to be flow state, and that's defeating a jolted target. Makes you amplified. While you're amplified, of course, everything is heightened. A lot of things use the amplifications. Even some of the weapons will synergize with that. And then Tempest Drag, just to make sure that, that I go over that, is you slide, you activate your melee, you throw out an uh, arc current all over the ground, and it'll actually do like a wave that'll jolt enemies in front of you, and that gets your abilities rolling as well, which goes into the fragments. So for me, I'm just trying to make sure that I have a lot of orbs out so that it'll feed my grenades, so I'm going to be Spark of Amplitude. Normally you would use something that's going to protect you, like your um, Spark of Resistance. In this case, Spark of Resistance is going to give you that additional energy back when you're surrounded by combatants, but I found that I didn't really need this in most play, maybe maybe in high-end content, but in, even in high-end content you're still not going to want to be in the middle of everything, so it's not super ideal. Or Spark of Shock is a must. Anytime you throw your grenades out, you're going to want to make sure that they jolt targets, because that's just going to add that additional damage, that's going to add that additional clearing factor, and it only costs you 10 discipline, which is not that much. You can make up for that pretty easily in your build, as you see that I've done as well, and I'll go over that here in a moment. Spark of Discharge is next. That's Arc Weapon Final Blows. Have a chance to create an Ionic Trace. That's just going to feed back into my abilities, just in case I'm a little bit shy. And that only costs 10 Strength. Strength is not super important in this build because, again, you have Gambler's Dodge, so you can get your melee back quickly if you happen to use it. And then you can just go right back into the loop again, and by the time you need it again, it'll be back. And then Spark of Ions, when you defeat Jolted Targets, that also creates Ionic Trace, and everything's going to be jolted in these builds. That's just going to keep feeding you Ionic Traces, which is going to keep feeding your abilities, keeping everything topped off, catching you up. So it's a really nice setup. Now let's go over the weapons that can synergize with this, based on your champion mods. Uh, if you're doing anti-barrier auto rifle, another great weapon to have is Centrifuge. That one is going to help you as you're moving along, you don't have to really stop to reload, you can kind of keep pushing when you're amplified, and of course having that amplification will buff the, the weapon again, as if you're using the uh, catalyst, which I still have to finish out, you get gradual overcharge, which will help keep you and your ammo topped off, so it's a really nice weapon. Uh, you can also use come to pass, there's like a triple tap adaptive munitions roll. Or Sorrow's Verse with Frenzy if you're trying to use a Legendary. But this is just probably what I'll be rocking with on this particular build with my Hunter if I'm taking it into content where I have Anti-Barrier Champs. Uh, Piercing Bowstring is also going to be nice this season because you have Trinity Ghoul and uh, Tripwire Canary. Those are two really strong bows that you can use in this scenario. And Trinity Ghoul, of course, is just great for add clear. Uh, when it comes to Unstoppable Fusion, you're going to want to also use, like in the Warlock builds, Delicate Tomb. 
Uh, that one's going to help get additional ionic traces as well, and it's just a really nice fusion rifle. You can either aim down sights for a tight spread, or you can have more of a shotgun spread if you just hip fire. It's been a little while since we've used that one, so Delicate Tunes going to have a nice comeback this season. Midas Reckoning with Reservoir Burst is also going to be nice. Very similar, kind of an add clear potential, clearing the room. And Iterative Loop with Volt Shot is another great one. And I believe that's Compulsive Reloader Volt Shot on that one. That's the nice roll there. If you're using Scout Rifles, uh, Tarnish Metal with Volt Shot is going to be really nice. And there's also going to be the option for the new Crafted Dead Man's Tail. Obviously the regular Dead Man's Tail, still great. I'm, I run mine with Vorpal, still a good option, but I look forward to having the Crafted Roll to see kind of what additional benefits I can put together on that and just make that perfect Dead Man's Tail. So I will be running that every time I get a chance to try to get a Dead Man's Tail. You get one guaranteed each week. And so after five weeks, of course, you'll have that ability to craft that. If you're running the Overload Hand Cannon, the Nation of Beasts is a really nice hand cannon. I have mine here. I've got Keep Away Payload on that. You could also run the Cantata with, with the uh, payload, but it's the timed payload, not the explosive payload. So it's going to feel a little different, but it still has that nice flinch ability, and it still will do really good for the Overload Champions because of that additional tick kind of helps register on overloads and stun them more reliably. Now the build what we're looking at is maximizing your mobility and your discipline and then of course getting your resilience to that 70 mark. I like to do that 70 mark with the Font of Endurance because again collecting that orb is going to get us 30 resilience, maxing us out at 100 and for me what I was doing was the powerful attraction so anytime I dodged it would pick up orbs so I wouldn't have to always run at the orbs to pick them up. I could just pick that up in the flow of things and also of course stacks on stack getting the additional armor charges to keep that up with charged up as well so that'll maximize my stacks. Now for Siphon I was running Harmonic Siphon, so that way anytime I get an arc kill, of course, I'll get the Orbs of Power after rapid kills. Uh, kinetic Siphon, if I happen to switch off to another weapon, you could run Kinetic Siphon. In this case, you can also switch this out, depending on how much you have left, if you're running Artifact or not. Uh, the uh, Ashes to Assets is really strong, because you're going to get a lot of grenade kills. And so you can swap this out for a, a mod for ammo, and then you can also swap this out for a mod for ammo if you want. Or if you can rock double Ashes to Assets, as you can see, I'll, I'll have the room on mine because it's only going to be one. So I could easily have switches out for another Ashes to Assets, or I can get an Ammo Finder for Special or Heavy Ammo, depending on what I feel like I'm running the lowest on. And so it's nice, it's got that flexibility. Now for the arms, I'm going to be running Impact Induction, causing damage with the melee attack, reduces your grenade cooldown. And that's where the melee comes in, where you slide and do your melee attack. You hit multiple targets, you get multiple bombs from impact induction, it's really nice. Grenade kickstart, of course, because I'm going to be generating a lot of armor charges. I'm going to be making sure that I am uh, getting that grenade energy topped off with the Lucky Raspberry being more reliable. This is going to actually probably give it that last little bit to keep your grenade full so that you can chain grenades back to back. The bolstering detonation, it'll give me class ability energy when using a grenade, so if I do my melee attack, I do my dodge, I do another melee attack, for example, I need to get my melee back. This is going to help lower that because then I'll throw a grenade out and it'll kind of feed back into a loop, so a really nice setup there. I'm going to be using harmonic resistance uh, because that's going to be the cheapest way to get some resistance in, so any arc damage I'll be shrugging off, like we talked about, charged up and font of endurance. Uh, from here, I'm going to be doing Innervation on my boots, so that way I get grenades energy back anytime I pick up an orb, and then better already, that's going to be my survivability. If I dodge near an orb, that'll powerful attract it to me, give me the regeneration for my health. You can also do the one that gives you the health bump right away, but I just kind of like the better already. I tend to dodge around a corner, and the health comes back. And then, of course, I'm running stacks on stacks. You can always swap this out for anything in your preference. If you need more, uh, like say you're having issues with ability energy because your armor is not quite the same, you can swap this out for something that will give you more ability energy on or pickup as well. You don't necessarily need the additional stack of armor charge, but it's nice to have. And then, of course, bomber. Anytime I dodge, I'm going to get that grenade back. Just trying to make sure I, I focus on grenades because this is a grenade build and try to get that back. And then Reaper, anytime I dodge, I also get an orb, which is going to start everything over again, start the chain, and like we talked about, powerful attraction. So now I'm going to go into the artifact. For the Lucky Raspberry Hunter, we've already talked about the weapons, so I'm just going to go right into the second column. 
In the second column, you can run Diviner's Discount. That's going to be all scav mods being discounted so that you can squeeze one in into the boots. I'm probably going to be running the Origin Perk specialization on this one, and then just like an additional Champion mod, because the combo mods are nice, but I don't necessarily need them because I'm just leaning into the arc. And so that's going to be probably where I'm at in the second uh, screen. Now in the third column, that's when it gets really important. You're going to be running Elemental Orbs Arc. That's going to make this build when it comes to having the Elemental Orb generation. And you're going to throw those out there. It's going to jolt targets. It's going to do damage. It's just going to add that additional benefit to the build to make it more fun, to make it fill the synergy in. And uh, you want to make sure that you're taking advantage of that particular perk. Because if you didn't, then why are you even running a new build you know what i mean it's it's a new new shiny thing so that's what i would run is the elemental orbs arc for sure that is mandatory you can then run origin perk specialization 2 to give those weapons overcharge or you can go back and just choose another champion mod to push you forward uh, to the next section and the next section is also important and so for the next section you can either run the overload machine gun if you really wanted to for me i'd actually be choosing the uh, communal pickups and that's almost mandatory for all of mine because i get super annoyed when people pick up my tangles right now on strand so i can only imagine the stress <laughs> going through trying to run your build and trying to get everything going and not having communal pickups it rewards the situation that somebody comes and grabs your elemental orb because you're going to be generating a ton you may not always be right underneath them to pick them up this way you get the generation time reduced and then you gain bonus weapon damage for 10 seconds so then all your arc stuff is just going to go on overdrive and that's going to stack with most things uh, then you can run uh, for example refreshing pickups refreshing pickups is going to give you that additional ability energy to your least powered ability uh, that's going to be something that you can decide for yourself if you find your ability energy is good because of the way Lucky Raspberry is set up, then you don't have to run this. You can swap to something like Elemental Fury to give yourself more damage on orbs against champions. Like I said, Overload. And also you can run the Semi-Auto Striker. So when you have fewer than two stacks, if you're running a bow or scout rifle, those are going to be something that you can use to then generate armor charge with precision. But my particular choices are going to be communal pickups and refreshing pickups more often than not. And the final column, uh, with all of these, it's going to be this, pretty much the same. You're going to be running the elemental munitions, which means that if you get the kills with elemental orbs, you're going to be getting a higher chance to get special and heavy ammo. That's just super important to generate that. And then you're going to be running monochromatic maestro. There are some weapons that are going to have some play with Rapid Fire Ranger again, and if you're running a long-range build, great, but not necessary. And so those are the setup that I would run. That's how I would set up the artifact, and this is just going to be a really nice, fun build next season. Can't wait to play it. So yeah, back full circle, back on my main that I'll be running for the build tomorrow. You'll see this video on Monday, so I say tomorrow as Tuesday. Once the servers come back up, if they come back up on Tuesday, which I hope they do, uh, I'll be in there right away going through all the information that's on there, going through the Guardian ranks again, uh, you know, just making sure that everything's set up for you guys so you can kind of see what's going on, the, what the missions look like if you're at work and you want to check them out. I'll be having all those videos posted Tuesday. It'll be a really busy day for me. But thanks very much for watching to the end of this video. I appreciate all my subscribers. I appreciate everybody giving me the support in the comments. Uh, you know, thanks very much again for, for keeping at least a little bit of positivity in what is otherwise kind of a rough time for destiny it's starting my channel at this particular time while it's been fun to help you guys out it's kind of like wow i picked maybe one of the worst times to actually launch a destiny channel and originally i wasn't even destiny i just figured that i would start making destiny guides because i love this game and this is where we are so hopefully season 22 turns out to be a nice season hopefully the reprise raid is something that's actually fun and engaging and something i can make a lot of videos about of course i'm going to be making the videos going over the encounters what are the changes how are the differences so you can count on me for that i'll be in there day one as well trying to get my day one clear so that i can get out and start making videos on everything behind that and hopefully i'm not delayed too long in that day one clear even though i do want it to be challenging i do kind of want to get through it so that way i can make those videos for everybody post them up on some of the subreddits so everybody can see them and uh, other than that thanks very much again guys i'll see you guys next season